Congratulations to the Evans Hill MPO. They've been recognized with the Outstanding Planning Project Award for their partnership with WNIN and the production of Healthy Air, Healthy Communities. Well, I always reset my, my uh, trip meter to make sure I'm getting about the same amount of miles on each fill up and if that changes a bunch, you know there's a problem and you should go get, get it checked. Over the last several years, uh, we've worked with state lawmakers to try to get some new laws put on the books and to update a lot of the wording that was in the old law because it was very outdated. If we can have options for healthy, local, more nutritious foods that are also accessible and affordable for all of our people in yes. all of our neighborhoods, yes. we will see improved outcomes. Mm -hmm. It's happening in communities across the country. Funding provided by the U.S. Department of Transportation, CMAC program. Thanks for joining us this month for Healthy Air, Healthy Communities. On the show today, we'll revisit last month's forum on the Millennial Plan for 2040, look at some products to make your car more efficient, and review the Indiana General Assembly session. Each year, the General Assembly deliberates on hundreds of bills. Some become law, others never make it out of committee. Here are some of the bills that were introduced this year that would have an effect on transportation and air quality, most notably the scooter law. House Bill 1203 proposed a $25 trail maintenance fee to be imposed on the retail sale of a non-exempt bicycle. The fee would be paid into a fund set up to relieve some of the costs of maintaining Indiana's bicycle trails. This bill did not pass. Senate Bill 49 would make it a Class C infraction if the driver of a vehicle didn't allow at least three feet of clearance between the vehicle and a bicycle rider. The driver of the vehicle must also not return to the original lane until safely clear of the bicycle. This bill also didn't make it to the governor's desk. Senate Bill 147 would have required the Indiana Department of Transportation to adopt and comply with complete street guidelines with all in-dot contracts entered by the end of the year 2014. This could have made pedestrian and bicycle traffic more convenient, established, and safe. Senate Bill 147 will have to be revisited in another year because it too did not pass. One bill that did pass in this year's legislative session is House Bill 1343, also known as the Scooter Bill. House Bill 1343 um, is the attempt to regulate mopeds in the state of Indiana. The Evansville uh, Police Department has been the champion behind this entire piece of legislation. Um, many officers have come up to Indianapolis every year to come testify. They've provided the most compelling testimony in the state as far as the need to address this issue and distinguish between a motorcycle and a moped. A few years ago, one of our auto theft detectives, Karen Montgomery, was involved in a case uh, where a single mother was in a wreck. Uh, she was struck by a scooter, and uh, the scooter operator didn't have insurance. Uh, the car was totaled, and the single mom who worked a couple jobs was out uh, the value of the vehicle, and she didn't have any kind of remedy. Uh, for the damage. That got the conversation started for us. Over the last several years, uh, we've worked with state lawmakers to try to get some new laws put on the books and to update a lot of the wording that was in the old law because it was very outdated. Uh, when you compare what mopeds were when the laws were written compared to the scooters that we see on the roads today. The new regulations go into effect January 1st of 2015. At that time, motor-driven cycles with engines under 50 cc will be considered Class B and required to comply with the changes. The two biggest things that your scooter operators are going to uh, notice is first is that they will have to register their scooters with the BMV, uh, just like motorcycles and cars do. Uh, they'll have to come in, uh, provide the paperwork, and they will be issued a motor-driven cycle license plate. Uh, the other big difference will be to operate a motor-driven cycle, you will have to get a motor-driven cycle endorsement on your ID card or your driver's license. Uh, to get that, you'll have to go to the BMV and take a written test that just shows that you can recognize street signs. If you're on a Class B motor-driven cycle, which is under 50 cc, which is a majority of what we're dealing with, uh, you will not be allowed to have a passenger on it anymore. 
Even though Class B motor-driven cycles still will not be required to have insurance, not everyone is excited about the new law. But officials explain why things are moving in the right direction. In 2013, the uh, number of cars stolen and the number of scooters stolen was almost one to one. And that's despite the fact that there are thousands of cars for every one scooter. Uh, we think that because there's no visible registration, uh, that it makes it easy for the scooter thieves to take them and then drive around on them and not be identified as a stolen scooter. Uh, with that plate on the back, it'll be just like a car. We'll be able to pull up behind it, run a license, and see if it's stolen or not. When you look at passing any type of legislation, you always want to do what's in the best interest of the community. And anyone in Evansville will recognize that we do have an issue with accidents. and. Um, if we can make this law to make it safer uh, for folks out there on the road, then it's, it's the important thing to do. What this is going to do for us is address some of the issues that we see that are kind of a trickle-down effect. You know, I know that the conversation started with insurance, and there are some uh, that believe without an insurance requirement that this bill really doesn't do anything. Uh, we hope within a few months of the, of the law being in effect next year, uh, maybe through the summer, we'll, we will be able to go back, do some numbers, and uh, see if there is a change. Regardless of any laws that we pass, there's always going to be people that are going to be following them. There are always going to be people that aren't. Um, but it's our hope that at least by licensing them and giving the law enforcement the opportunity to distinguish between the two, which is definitely needed, um, that will help us better enforce and, and make it a safer place for everybody.